Alright guys, this is a video that, uh, an idea that kind of popped into my mind a couple of times over the summer. I've been thinking about how to do it, how to go about it, whatnot, and I'm like, why not just throw on the mic and let's, let me talk as my thoughts flow because that's really, I really don't have an organized way to go about this just because the topic at hand, like, how good can the New York Giants defense be in 2019? What what's their uh, limit? What's what's their ceiling? How far up in the sky can they go? What's their what's their floor? Where are we right now? You know, and right off the bat, let me get that out of the way. I believe that we can be a top 15 defense going into 2019. The worst rank we could take this year would be 18th, with the best being eighth. And yes, that's a huge range, a 10, you know, a 10 team range. But we have the personnel. We have the talent, we have the skill, and we have the coach to do it. So, let's get right into it. So let's start off with the coach first, James Betcher, former defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals that built his way up from being an outside linebacker coach for the Colts and the Cardinals. James Betcher is known in the NFL for like having a very aggressive 3-4 defense uh, of him. I believe it's like a mixed 3-4 or something like that, or a hybrid 3-4 defense relies heavily on blitzes and heavily on uh, fake outs and stuff like that. Just mostly what the defense's goal is to cause turnovers by tackling and, you know, uh, cause turnovers and cause stops by tackling and sacking. Now, when he was with the Cardinals, he uh, they had a pretty good run in 2015 uh, in, when they went to the NFC Championship game. That year, the Cardinals defense which was the first year he was a defensive coordinator. It was ranked ninth in net yards allowed, second in win-loss percentage, fourth in takeaway giveaway ratio, and second in point differential. So all in all, a pretty good defense. Uh, this, of course, big names on there, such as uh, Patrick Peterson, Teron Matthew, Marcus Golden at the time, who I, I think that was his best career year. And, you know, just a good personnel in general. And Betcher made it work. They were one of the best defenses in the league that year. In 2016, coming off the playoff loss and whatnot, the Cardinals, it, this is kind of where it went downhill from here, 2016, 2017. But Betcher still managed to keep the defense uh, at least formidable for opponents. This time in net yards, they went from 9th to 3rd ranked. Unfortunately, dropped their win-loss percentage from 2nd to 20th, but that's, of course, a team thing. The giveaway-takeaway ratio went from 4th to 17th, but they stayed top 10 in points allowed with 7th overall and were first in the NFL in the yards differential ratio. So while, you know, it was a team as a whole that dropped off a little bit, he still managed to keep the defense a bend but don't break. And the stats were much of the same for 2017. This tells us that James Betcher can make a defense work even when he doesn't have a lot of names around him, even when he doesn't have a lot of talent around him. His Cardinal defense, which was one of the best in 2015, had a good amount of names. Uh, over the past couple years, they lost some of those players, you know, Turner Matthew, gone. Marcus Golden, gone to injury. Guys that never panned out from the draft. In general, he's made it work in Arizona with this defense. They've stayed uh, top 15 over the past three years. And with the Giants, we're in a similar position. Last year, we were definitely one of the worst uh, defenses out there. We were bottom 20. I think we were like 23rd or something. But we definitely had a bend but don't break mentality towards the end of the year. The beginning... The team as a whole was just, it was not clicking, whether you're looking at offense or defense. But after that uh, bye week, things things started looking up a little bit. Guys started getting used to the system. Like I said, it's a very difficult system to learn, this uh, hybrid 3-4. And we started performing better on both sides of the ball. Granted, we still need a long way to go on the defense. And this is why it leads me into personnel. We have a lot of youth on this defensive side here with good veteran leaders to guide the youth on how to grow as players and people. For the veterans, we got Antoine Buffet, who's had experience in this scheme before with Betcher. 
We have Alec Ogletree, who was a good vocal leader in the locker room last year. Had his best year in pass defense, but definitely dipped in run stopping and whatnot. Although you could say that's a little bit towards his injury towards the beginning of the year. We have Janoris Jenkins on here still, who is still very much a top 10 cornerback in the league. Interceptions aren't everything. J Jenkins is one of the best pass defenders in the league still. And then we got, you know, veterans that are sort of now stepping into a leader type role that weren't necessarily world beaters in their prime, but definitely have experience around the league, such as uh, Marcus Golden, who's definitely had experience in this uh, defensive scheme, had his best years there before injury took hold of him. And Dalvin Tomlinson, who maybe I might still consider one of the young guys. And then we have a bunch of young players. Like I said, you could probably consider Daniel Thompson one of them. B.J. Hill entering his second year, who with limited snaps last year led the Giants in sacks, broke the Giants' rookie sack record. Dexter Lawrence, a very versatile player, similar to Hill, who was also very versatile on that uh, three defensive line technique that they both run. They could play inside or outside in the 3-4. Lorenzo Carter entering his second year, who also with limited snaps came up with four, four and a half sacks last year. Definitely not that he's going to be getting full playing time. I expect that to hit upwards of 10 sacks. Believe it or not, guys, he did four and a half sacks with a good amount of QB pressures last year. Unlimited playing time as a role player, as a rotating piece. Now that he's listed as our starter, I expect him to get with that speed of his, that incredible speed, and he's bulked up over the offseason. His added muscle and strength. I expect him to get around 10 sacks. BJ Hill, he's still probably going to be a rotational piece, but not saying he won't get a good amount of playing time. It's just because the versatility of that defensive line will, I will see. And you guys should expect Dexter Lawrence and BJ Hill to be rotating at spots and whatnot. But I expect him to get six, seven sacks we could expect from him. Dexter Lawrence, rookie year, I'm going to give him three or four sacks. In general, our sacks and QB pressures are going to be up a lot from last year. Getting to the quarterback is something that this team is going to do a lot from the inside, much so like a lot of other teams around the league, and it's kind of what the NFL is moving to. The outside linebacker and defensive end positions are getting lighter and quicker, which I'm not sure if I agree with, but it's just the way the league is moving. And the uh, inside lineman, the defensive tackle position is really where a lot of pressures are coming from. Prime example being the Rams with Aaron Donald. And the Bucks seem to be trending in that direction too with Vita Vea and their sign of Indomitian Sue and whatnot. But that's just the way the trend is going for defenses in the NFL. Our linebacking group, I won't lie to you, needs some work. We still have Alec Ogletree, who I expect to have a good year this year. Putting together his best pass defense with his best run defense, we should get the best version of Alec Ogletree. I hope to see him better on run stuffing and run coverages, and I definitely hope he improved on his tight end coverage. In. Uh, continue on with the linebackers, like I said about Zoe Carter, I expect him with his full playing time now to do better. We're going to have uh, O'Shane Zimenez being rotated in there who led his uh, college, broke all his college records for defensive ends and sacks and pressures. On the other side, Marcus Golden, who claims to be fully recovered from his injury, and Kareem Martin seem to be rotating at that starting spot. I believe Golden will have it by the time the season game one comes around. We'll see how that goes. But expect good pressures from these two defensive linemen. Uh, my bad, outside linebackers, Zoe and Marcus Golden. Expect good pressures from them, but expect most of the sacks and the hurries from the inside. I'm telling you, I feel like that's where this team is moving to. And then, of course, our completely young secondary, man. Uh, first off, let me start off with the not-so-young guys. In Antoine Bethea, who is a great safety, great journeyman throughout the league, been with a lot of teams, seen a lot of looks, basically knows all the uh, offensive looks. Will definitely be a great teacher to these guys in the locker room. Jabil Preppers, who's still young, but is in a leadership role. He's under 25, I believe, only going to enter his fourth or fifth year in the league. A great cover safety, along with a great tackler. Uh, expect out of him to be a Landon Collins that could cover that's really and I'm not taking shots at Collins right now that's exactly how he plays his tackling plays like a mini linebacker his coverage plays like a cornerback he's a great strong safety to have and then already spoke about Jenkins but we got DeAndre Baker one of the best sticky cover cornerbacks coming out of college in the past two years Julian Love who I'm not sure what they're doing with yet but he's listed at free safety he's also a slot corner. Grant Haley, 
slot corner undrafted free agent who impressed a lot of people last year was ranked the second best rookie cornerback by Pro Football Focus. Sam Beal, Corey Ballantyne, and a ton of other guys that are really young, are ready to be developed, they're really raw, but our secondary is definitely better than last year. We have a lot of talent and a lot of potential in these guys, and if things break right, we should be top 15. If things break right, and the potential of these guys, they don't necessarily have to pan out completely, they just have to play good. They just have to play good defense. They just have to play with the scheme. All of them working together as a team, which seems to be the message in the locker room under James Betcher's defense, where he's shown with less talent, with less skill at the positions that he has now, he's done great things. I expect great things from this defense if things break right. Of course, that's a big if, but that's what this video is about. What is the limit? What is the sky? What is the ceiling of the Giants defense? I say top 15, I say they could hit that number 8, top 10, but that's if things break right. Let me know what you guys think, just a quick thought I had in my head, uh, you know, I wanted to get it out there for a while, I might do something similar on the offensive end, but definitely want to get it out for a defensive end since that's our weaker spot. Alright guys, thanks for watching, put your comments down below, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Eer.